Tuesday test confirming what our eyes told us on Monday night. Buccaneers leading receiver Chris Godwin's season likely over due to a dislocated left ankle. 28 year old was on a personal best pace in a contract year, but sustained the injury with less than a minute left in Tampa's week seven loss to the Ravens. Uh, he will be undergoing surgery uh, very soon. It, it'll probably be out for the year. There's a chance if we make a late playoff run, he could be back, but he's undergoing surgery and, and he's going to be out. And we didn't, um, you know, I think on Sunday, uh, Mike was off the injury report. It looked like he might have aggravated himself a little bit on that first touchdown catch. Was the thought just like he, he couldn't make it worse? And, and with Mike, um, would you expect him to be back really before the bye week at this point? At this point, we're probably expecting after the bye week. Uh, mm -hmm. He tweeted pretty good when he fell on it on that play. And yeah. it's moderate, but it is, 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 is hurting pretty good right now. So we'll probably say after the bye week, hopefully. All right, there in the words of the head coach, we now say hello to Tyler Sullivan, CBS Sports NFL writer, here to react to more injury news. And this is going to really push this Tampa team to their brink. Tyler, Godwin and Evans accounting for almost exactly half of Baker's passing yards this season, 11 of 18 of his passing touchdowns. Is this an offensive personnel group capable of shifting its emphasis on the fly and remaining competitive? Well, I, I think it's going to be a, be an offensive group that has to shift its identity a little bit because we've known this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team dating back to when even you know Jameis Winston, Tom Brady, go down the list of the quarterbacks the last few years, it's been Mike Evans and Chris Godwin kind of dominating the offense. And now both of them, in a blink of an eye, are gone for the foreseeable future. So now you kind of got to change who you are. No matter who you bring in or who you have in-house at the moment, they're not going to be able to replicate what Mike Evans and Chris Godwin bring on a week in week out basis so what do the Bucks do now I think they might be a little bit more of a physical ground and pound team it's kind of something that they've already been kind of adopting over the last few weeks we've seen the emergence of Sean Tucker they have Bucky Irving Rashad White I think you're going to see a lot more of those guys in maybe a little bit more 12 personnel emphasizing the tight ends we saw Kate Otten be a huge part to that game for them offensively the other night so I think that's kind of who they are now in this post Evans post Godwin world the silver lining of it all if you're looking for one is that the south still sort of looks like the south but it does feel far more open let's say than a week ago saints are ding too bucks obviously beat up atlanta has its issues not infallible to any measure and then there's the other team what do you think when you look at that division right now as it currently stands we approach the halfway point of this season is there an is there an advantage one way or the other when you look at these four yeah, if we're trying to look at who has the best path or, or who do we like at the moment, I think you just have to default go the Falcons. Yeah. And, you know, you, you've listed the concerns there. Of course, that you know, you know, they, they kind of are prone to maybe having some slip ups every now and again. They're not a tightly wound perfect machine at this point. But what they do have right now, particularly on the offensive side of the ball, that the Buccaneers do not is health. Bijan Robinson, Drake London, Kirk Cousins, Kyle Pitts. You go down the list; those guys are still there now. This is kind of an inflection point this week because you do have the Falcons going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. At the moment, the Falcons, thanks to a win earlier this season, have the tiebreaker in the division. If the Buccaneers do kind of pull out a victory here, then maybe this could springboard them. I don't think we should write them off just yet because, yes, they have a tough schedule after that. They face the Chiefs and the 49ers before the bye. Not something you necessarily want to see happen. But after that... One of the easiest schedules in the NFL in terms of their opponent's strength of schedule. So don't sleep on the Bucks just yet, but right now certainly the Falcons have the inside track at the cell. All right, let's, let's preach some good news here. The Saints giving their star back in Alvin Kamara. Two years, $24.5 million on Tuesday. Team taking care of their guy here and uh, helping a cap number as well in 2025. 20, 22 million, excuse me, of that money coming in guarantees, Tyler. What does this move tell you? Because this is a team that's lost five straight sort of on the brink. Is this them signaling to the NFL, don't call about Alvin? 
Yeah, I think that that's really it because you look at these next couple of weeks here or you just look at them right now and you say, what are we? What do we want to be? What are we going to be as an organization going forward? And is Alvin Kamara a part of that? There was talk about his future over the offseason when all these running backs were getting paid. Obviously, did not come at that juncture. And this is another natural progression where you have those conversations once more. And if we all are talking about that, then certainly other organizations are talking about that as well and if the Saints as you reference lose five in a row after you know blowing doors in their first couple of weeks mm -hmm. offensively come back down to earth maybe you do call and say hey what would it take to get Alvin Kamara out of New Orleans I mean he was even tweeting about speculation that he could possibly be out of New Orleans he shut that down and he shut it down now inking this new deal but this is a key moment for the New Orleans Saints, not just for Alvin Kamara going forward, but for this season. They need to save it over the next couple of weeks here, and they have opponents that are susceptible to the run. Between now and the trade deadline, you're going to be using Alvin Kamara, so you best sign him now as opposed to keeping him kind of uneasy about his future and still using him like Alvin Kamara that we've all seen. That deadline fast approaching, certainly inside two weeks now as we take a look at some of the names that could potentially find a different landing spot. Cooper Cup, an interesting name that's been floated around as LA sort of reeling at the moment as well. Cup going to be back in action this Thursday night at home. Big time matchup there, but it's a team in a division that nobody has distanced themselves just yet. Is Cooper Cup a part of the answer in LA or is it finally a different tone from the ownership and from that front office that the picks do matter? Yeah, I think that it's kind of the same conversation that we were just having with Alvin Kamara, where the Saints are saying, what are we doing? Who are we? And is this player part of our future? And right now, you really have to take a hard look at yourself if you're the Los Angeles Rams. You're behind in the division, and it feels like your arrow overall is pointing downward. Yes, when things are absolutely cooking, you have Puka Nakua and Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup all in the fold. Your offense is prolific. You throw Kyron Williams into the mix out of the backfield as well but you do at some point have to hit the reset button in some sense and if you're looking at cooper cup and saying you know what within this window with for the amount of money that we still owe this player he's not necessarily part of the equation now is the time we've seen a lot of receivers move and a lot of teams be in on those receivers and miss out on Devonte adams miss out on amari cooper they're still willing to pay and the reports are that they want a second round pick if that report if that request is made and that is given to them you might have to look at moving on from your Super Bowl MVP Cooper Cup on the wrong side of 30 as it currently stands but coming back always great to see him playing some football no matter the jersey we'll see if that jersey changes before that deadline Tyler Sullivan bringing us all the latest across the NFL thank you Tyler oh we got NFL on the way you know these weeks they roll and right along here's a look at your Sunday slate on CBS Eagles and Bengals doing battle. How about the 425 game of the week? Bears and Commanders could be one versus two, but Jaden Daniels' status up in the air following that rib injury. It's going to be high-flying action all weekend long on CBS.